Yes, during my formative years, mushroom clouds were all the rage. Britain's doctors say 33 million people in this country may be killed and injured in a nuclear war. To my babyish eyes, it seemed every news bulletin consisted of nuclear paranoia, Mrs Thatcher, blood-curdling statistics about the inevitable apocalypse, and the only people trying to stop this madness seem to be kindly dinner ladies and lofty off EastEnders. If we have got peace camps, non-violent direct action outside every nuclear base in this country, they can't shift us. Yeah, except maybe with uh, water cannons or, or tasers or, or bulldozers, or I suppose they could always just walk in and physically pick you up. What I'm saying is they can shift you. Despite the high stakes, however, it was hard for the average viewer to picture a nuclear war. I mean, we'd seen what happened in Hiroshima, but that was black and white and crackly and seemed to mainly affect Japanese people living in the 1940s, so it didn't really count. What the average Brit needed was a no-nonsense visual guide to what could happen, and hallelujah, that's precisely what they got. In 1982, the BBC broadcast a QED special called A Guide to Armageddon, which simulated the consequences of one megaton nuclear bomb going pop a mile over St Paul's Cathedral. Apparently, the heat alone would be inconsiderate enough to slightly damage the cross on top of St Paul's, spoil a few windows, leave a Bible looking dog-eared, slightly devalue the contents of the National Gallery and boil the serpentine a bit. It would be bad news for anyone who enjoys not burning to death in an incinerated car or bus, and even if you lived four miles away and were hiding indoors, it was probably going to go down as one of your least favourite afternoons, especially if you've been looking forward to reading Woman's Own. In fact, if you were even vaguely nearby, your body would frazzle like a carbonised lamb chop unless you were standing as far away as Wimbledon, at which point at least one of your eyebrows would survive. Yeah, it looks pretty nasty, but the ladies love a war wound, yeah? <laughs> You'd be beating them off with a stick. Albeit a burnt, smouldering, radioactive stick. Anyway, in case you're worried the situation seems hopeless, the show went on to highlight some of the defensive measures the average 1980s couple could take. Following the helpful Protect and Survive pamphlet, the duo whitewashed their windows and construct a bijou shelter under the stairs, perfect for enjoying a cup of tea in. And they fare pretty well. The whitewash keeps 80% of the heat out. There may be fires in unprotected houses nearby, but Joy and Eric should survive. Hmm. At least for 17 seconds. Hmm. After that, the blast demolishes their terrace of houses. The QED Atomic Splattacular proved so entertaining it convinced the BBC to make Threads, possibly the most frightening drama ever broadcast on British television. Threads graphically depicted how a nuclear bomb could cause millions of pounds worth of improvement to Sheffield's architecture. The moment of detonation itself was brilliantly realised, rammed with stark, horrifying images that set amygdala across the nation lighting up like the residents of Sheffield. Jesus Christ, the dummy. And then just when you think things can't get any worse, they do. Because Threads keeps going, trudging into the grim aftermath as Sheffield is transformed into an almost Plymouth-style wasteland in which people eat rats like their cream buns and the cast of Last of the Summer Wine is hopelessly depressed. And even Ron Weasley isn't safe. I guess if Threads had an overall theme, it was, oh, shit. The next morning, BBC reporters descended on Sheffield to gauge how the locals reacted to seeing their homes and workplaces destroyed. I quite enjoyed it, actually. But, uh, enjoyed I... seems a strange word to use in such a harrowing play. Yeah, it may be, but uh, I didn't find it frightening at all. At around the same time, the Americans had a pop at nuclear drama themselves, with the vaguely more upbeat The Day After, which starred Steve Gutenberg in a tale of everyday burning, screaming Americans. Just like Threads, it depicted billowing mushroom clouds, which looked a bit like the world's grooviest lava lamp. And a hilarious sequence in which a kiddiewink gets a bit too much nuclear war in his eye. <laughs> uh, anyway, Steve Gutenberg survives by hiding in a shop. Although the uh, radiation does leave him looking a little less cocksure by the end. After US President Ronald Reagan saw this, he wrote in his diary that it was very effective and had left him greatly depressed. And not long afterwards, the superpowers adopted a policy of arms reduction, culminating in the signing of the Intermediate Nuclear Arms Force Treaty in Reykjavik. So in summary, Steve Gutenberg saved the world. Thanks, Steve. Don't make any more films. <laughs>